From my personal experience, anything you want to know, this man right here, especially when it comes to science, has the answer. Okay? So. No, I have it, an answer. Whether or not it's the answer, that's, an, that's to be determined. Please, you're ruining what I believe in. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> I want to dismantle your belief yes, system. Yes, exactly. <laughs> My whole world is crumbling. I need to believe in you, man. All right? Tides are widely misunderstood. Okay. All right? I will, I will say, the next thing I say may be mind-blowing to you. Okay. Okay? The tide doesn't actually come in and out. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what happens is, there is a bulge of water, two of them, on opposite sides of the Earth, caused by the sun and the moon, and Earth turns inside that bulge. Mm -hmm. So when, this, when we say the water rises and falls tidally, what's happening is we are rotating into the bulge and then out of the bulge. So the bulge is already there. It's already there. And all we kind of do is pass through the pass bulge. Pass through, and the water gets high, mm -hmm. and it gets low. So we're stuck with language from our own perspective rather than language of what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. It's simpler that way to say the water goes in and yeah. out. It's simpler to say the sun set rather than Earth rotated such that our angle of view on the stationary sun fell below our local horizon. Right. This is, yeah, sunset is far more poetic. Yeah, yeah you, just, you go to yeah. the sunset tables, yeah. you know, to look this up. Yeah, because you can't say to a girl, hey, how'd you like to go and watch the angular momentum of the Earth <laughs> cause the sun to disappear behind a horizon? <laughs> Hello, where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at just the Earth and the moon for the moment. Okay. Okay. Which many, pe many people think the moon is what causes it. No, the moon is two-thirds of the tides. Okay. Okay, the sun is another, it's two-thirds, three-quarters, depends on the distance. The sun has its own tides on the Earth. Oh, snap. Wait, in fact, the tides that the moon raises on Earth mm -hmm. are the same no matter the phase. Okay, no matter the phase of the moon, which yes. there are some people believe that when you have a full moon, what you have is a higher tide because you have a fuller moon. You do have a higher tide. Oh, snap. But the tide that the moon raises on the Earth is basically the same no matter its phase. No matter its phase. What happens at full moon uh -huh. is that the sun's tides add to the moon's tides precisely. Oh, snap. We talking about a tide assist from the, the sun? The tide assist. Oh! A tide assist. And so that's why- And that coincides with the full moon. Coincides with, with the full moon. Because nice. the full moon, you got the moon here, right. Earth, and the sun, everybody lines up. That's what it is. In fact, we have a word for that. Go ahead. It has the most number of letters when scripted uh, dip below the line. Okay. I know that's a weird, a, a weird record to hold. Right. The word is syzygy. So syzygy is when three or more objects come into alignment in, you know, cosmically. Right. So you have the moon, the earth. Right. The moon will have the same tide it would at any time, right. but now it lines up with the sun. Right. They add together, you get the highest, highest tides tide. at full moon, and new moon. So now I ask you, when would you get the lowest tide? Uh, when the sun is not lined up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me quantify that. So when the sun is at 90 degrees, right. the sun is pulling this, this way, way, and the moon, the moon is, pulling is pulling that, that way, way, and the two waves right. basically cancel. Exactly. They try to cancel one of them, so you have the lowest tide. It's called the neap tide. The neap? Neap. Neap tide. Neap tide. See, look at this. It's not the moon. It was the sun all, all the time. All the time. It was the sun all the time. I see. And you think because, see. Wait, wait. So when people say, uh -huh. I feel the extra tidal forces from the moon yeah. when it's full, right. it's just bullshit. Oh. So just want to clear that up. Okay. Okay. So I didn't, haven't explained tides yet. Let me take two minutes to explain Holy that. Holy crap. Okay. That was just about the moon and the sun and the fact that the bulge. So that's right, what right, we have right, right, right now. So watch what happens. So watch ahead, what happens. Go for it. So, and let's just look at Earth and the Moon for the moment. Mm -hmm. The side of the Earth that's closest to the Moon feels a stronger gravitational pull of the Moon and than the side, side of the Earth, Earth that's, that's farthest away. Right. Okay. Right. The closer you are to the source of gravity, the stronger is that force. Right. Is that force? That's true for everything. Right. No so matter the what. Moon is always exerting a gravitational pull on the Earth. On the Earth, yes. And there's a difference in the gravitational pull from one side to the other. Okay. Because if there's a difference, it means it's pulling this harder than that. Right. If you do that, you end up stretching. Okay. So the water stretches along the line that the moon's tidal forces are pulling. Gotcha. Okay, it's a stretching force. Right. All right? 
And by we're the way, we're gonna call that Earth Yoga. <laughs> so, so, yes. <laughs> and now, okay, downward dog. <laughs> so it does that for anything. Mm -hmm. Water happens to be uh, more responsive to this force because it's liquid, right. but it also raises tides on the solid Earth. Oh. But you don't see that right. happening. You're not see that you, you, you don't know, and it's small, much smaller, and so. But it does it basically for everything, and so that's how you get a tide. That's how you get the tides. Wow. And so, and so that bulge is always there, but the sun is messing with it. Right. Okay. Exactly. So as the moon orbits the Earth, and the tidal bulge sort of the tidal bulge is, is, is moving, tracking, with, moving it. with the moon. Right. And the sun is like exerting its forces its force simultaneously. Simultaneously, and it either lines up or it doesn't. Wow. Okay. Good. How much brain you got left to get? I don't know, man. We are about this. Okay, so now watch. We, okay. we were only working with this to begin with. Okay. <laughs> now we down to about this. Okay, so watch what happened. Go ahead. So it turns out we are rotating faster than the time it takes the moon to go around the Earth. Okay? So a day is shorter than a month. Okay? All right. So so we are actually, if, if you, the viewer, are the moon, mm -hmm. and you're trying to raise this bulge, mm -hmm. okay? I am dragging the bulge ahead of you because I'm rotating faster. That's right. Okay, so so the bulge is not actually exactly aligned. No, it's over here. It's, it's, it's like that way, and then that angle. And you're pulling. So now watch. So what? What? So it's because I'm rotating. So now right. watch. So the moon is actually tugging on that bulge, trying to line it back up. Right. And it does that against the wishes of our rotation. Right. So the tidal bulge, because of the moon, is slowing down the rotation of the Earth. So are you telling me that- That's why we have leap seconds. There you go. So the tides are not only responsible for what we perceive as water going in and out, it's, res it's responsible for the slowing down, down of the, the rotation Earth. of the Earth. And the Earth has been slowing down ever since the moon has existed. Okay, and we know this because there are mollusks that have certain features in their in their physical body uh -huh. that that attract to the phases of the moon. Okay. Really. Yes. Okay. So 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 attract to the how when they're stuck on the ground versus when they're in the tide comes and gets them. Okay. okay? There's a record of the cyclings of the moon of the tides. Now watch. We also have other evidence for how many of those cyclings occur in a calendar year. Right. And back then, there were more of them. Uh huh. Okay. So the fact which, which meant that Earth rotated faster, faster back then. Yes. So the moon has been slowing us down ever since. Or the Earth is just getting really tired. And then there are people who say, if the moon affects the water, and the water is made of water, and we're mostly water, what well, doesn't the moon affect us? Uh huh. Because we're in 80 to 70 percent water. It's a common, it's a natural thing to think about. Which is when people say that people act weird during a full moon. Yeah. Yeah. Even though the moon's Tides are not That's stronger. stronger. Okay. It's really the sun. It's really the sun. See? <laughs> Full circle, baby. Right, right. Just like so, Earth. But you want to explain lunatics. Um, they're really sonatics. They're sonatics. <laughs> exactly. Solatics. So solatics. That's solatics. Better, way better. That's what they would be. Yeah, you, you a solatic. You a solatic. So here's the thing. The moon creates a tidal force across your skull. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? I, I did not know that. Yes. And across anything. Right. This side of your head is closer to the moon than this side of your head. Okay. But we can calculate what that difference in gravity is across your head. Really? It's not very much. Damn, man, why you gotta do that to me? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a little, you got a little <laughs> head. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can calculate how much that is, and then you can compare it to other things that are operating on your head. Like you go to sleep, and there's a pillow sitting right here. Right. You can, the weight of the pillow to distort your skull is about a trillion times stronger than the tidal force of the moon's gravity across your skull. But no one creates whole, whole mystical predictions about, about, what, about pillow, what your pillow's going to what be. Your pillow, what, what brand of pillow you slept with last night. Uh, yeah, so there are very strong ways you can demonstrate that really there's no effect on people other than the effect you think it's supposed to have. Right. You come out of the bar okay. at two in the morning, right. full moon is up. Oh, it's a full moon. Right. I'm, I'm crazy. going crazy. I'm it has nothing crazy. to do with all that Jack Daniels in there. Yeah. <laughs> that too. <laughs> That's very cool. Well, oh, it's man. tied to why you rip, why you get shredded as you fall into a black hole. 
The spaghettification of falling into a black hole is all because of tides. You fall in feet first. Right. A black hole is small enough so that your height is going to make a difference as you fall in. Mm -hmm. The gravity at your feet begins to greatly outstrip the gravity at your head. Right now, your feet are more attracted to the Earth than your head is. Okay. But you're, Just, you're six feet tall. That's small compared to the, the, the radius of the Earth. Right. A black hole is small. And so when you come down near a black hole, your height is matters relative to the size of the black hole. So this difference in force grows and grows until it becomes greater than the intermolecular force that holds your flesh together. Right. And then you end up snapping in two likely at the base of the spine. Oh, God, that feels good. Well, no, initially you feel good. You say, oh, I like stretching. Who doesn't like a good stretch? Right. And then you say, okay, I had enough. Pop. <laughs> <laughs> now there's two of you going down, right. and those two segments feel the tidal force, and then they snap into two. You go from one to two to four to eight to 16, and you bifurcate as a stream of atoms all the way down to the cosmic abyss. That is why I'm going into the black hole cannonball. <laughs> Actually, I tried to think this through. If you sort of rotate rotisserie style, then it can't focus on one way to stretch you. Really? So, what, what, so yeah, you might be able to get a little further in. In a cannonball. In a, in a, in a rotating, rotating cannonball. Rotating really, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. My summative reflections Ooh. on this time we've had together okay. is that. I enjoyed it too. Wherever in the universe you find gravity, you find tides. Nice. Yes, yes. All right, you can see that we're just starting to dip our toes into the surface of the science of tides. And if you're interested in learning more about, I don't know, gravity's effects on pretty much everything, or how physics affects our everyday lives, or the scientific phenomena of the moon and what it doesn't cause. Hey, whether you're a science enthusiast, or a astrophysicist, or a professional, or a lifelong learner, Brilliant helps you master concepts in math, science, and engineering through solving fun and challenging problems. And you can sign up for free to get access to weekly challenges, the community discussions, and access to the math and science wiki. And as a bonus to StarTalk viewers, the first 782 that go to brilliant.org slash star talk will get 20% off the annual subscription, which helps you think like a scientist, right, Neil? We'll guide you through course material, the ability to track your progress with stats and extra practice. If you want to learn more about tides, there's a link in the description, which takes you to the quiz on Brilliant on which this video is based. So try it out, all right? If you want to see more Star Talk videos, hit the subscribe button and click the bell button to get notifications every time we upload a video. And I'll let you have the last word because you always say, keep doing what? Keep looking up. <laughs>